What's the difference between a group of people working together and a team? Well, I think this quote sums it up quite well. A group becomes a team when each individual is sure enough of themselves and their contribution that they will give praise to others. And that's a quote from Norman Scheidel, who is a early 20th century author in the area of business. That quote might seem a bit of a contrast to the topic of this video, which is passive aggression on a team. But actually, if you have passive aggression on a team, you probably don't have a team by that definition. So this is the third part of a three-part series of where I am addressing passive aggression. Part one is, what is passive aggression and why do we do it? Part two is how to deal with it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And this is about teams. In this video, I am going to share my experience of how do you take a group that's got some dysfunctional conflict and move it into a highly functioning team. So I'm Karen Valencic. I am the founder and author of Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace. And I've worked with leaders and teams for three decades now. And I've seen a lot and I've heard a lot and I've worked with a big variety of teams. So passive aggressive behavior on a team, why should we care? Well, I'll tell you why you should care is because it is expensive to have that kind of behavior on a team. I created a video that I'll put a little card up over here that will direct you to it that's called the cost of conflict or how conflict is like water. Because when you've got that kind of behavior, you lose productivity, you lose engagement, and you're gonna hurt your outcomes in terms of your innovation. As a bit of an aside, I heard on a podcast the other day, an interview with a leader who leads a 50 person healthcare company. One of the ways he specifically talked about passive aggressive behavior on his team is they record every conversation. It's video recorded, even one-on-one -on -one conversations. That's part of their culture. People are on their best behavior because it's all documented. I'm not suggesting you do that. I think there's some other ways, but I thought that was fascinating to hear him comment that that is an issue that he is concerned about because he knows it impacts their innovation and their performance. I'm going to address three different areas, leadership, skill building, and culture, because all three of those things impact whether there's passive aggressive behavior on your team or not. First of all, leadership. The blame often sits right on the leader if they've got dysfunction on their team. Sometimes that's rightly deserved, and sometimes I have seen leaders inherit what is called a shit sandwich <laughs> with a team. And, and that happens, and that happens frequently as things change. It takes a lot of skill for a leader to both lead, manage, and change a culture of a team. I wanna just give some love out to you leaders if you're in that type of situation, but you really wanna model, always model what you want to see. And I also don't think that that is enough. You, of course, need to build your skills, which takes me to the second area I wanted to talk about, is skill building. Keep in mind, as I said in, the, in part one, is most people come into an organization and they have their communication skills that they learn from their families, the media, and our entertainment. And I'll tell you, not much of it is very productive. Think about skill building for every person on your team. And I think it's great if you can do that as a group altogether. My book, Spiral Impact, is actually a method for conflict mastery. I think you need to understand that a lot of times people don't come to your workplace and have those skills already. And even people that have some pretty good skills, you can always improve those more. It's something that I continually develop for myself. The third area that I mentioned is culture. And culture is huge. And I talk about these things in part one of this series. One of the things I do when I work with teams is I do skill building, but I also do some real culture building. So many organizations, they have their mission and their vision of what they're gonna do. I like to have them also have a what I call is a credo 
of how they are going to work together. And what I find the most effective is if the team will develop that themselves. And I actually take people through a process where I have them do reflection around great experiences with teams, around values, around wishes. And I do a lot of engagement in terms of having them talk to each other about what's really, really, really important. The process of doing that is so powerful because it creates a dialogue. What I've noticed, if you've got somebody in the group that is just not a fit, what'll tend to happen is they will leave. Once you define what that culture is, they don't have an excuse to be there anymore. And then you can continually use that credo in all of your conversations. In your evaluations, you can use it in your hiring process. You know, I go into great depth on all of those things in my book, Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace, the Black Belt Edition. Page 169, I go through aligning teams and there's things in there about feedback and how I specifically do these things. So check that out. And if you haven't seen part one and part two, you might wanna go back and check out those videos and then check for the resources that I have listed below. I have master classes about once a month that I'd love for you to come and participate in. They're complimentary. Uh, karensmasterclass.com is where you find information about the ones coming up. I thank you for hanging in here with me. I love questions and comments, so please do that. I will definitely answer them. And until next time, 